what's up everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about how to organize and structure our websites. This video is best watched on a computer or laptop and does require the basics of web development and a text editor. If you need to learn about those, check out my last video in the description about web development fundamentals. Throughout the video, I'm going to be comparing organizing our site to a dresser drawer in a home. Each drawer has a defined purpose which makes it easy to find what we are looking for. Likewise, we are going to organize our site by separating our HTML, CSS, and JS into separate files. This is also known as separation of concerns, breaking down each part of our site into individual files, keeping our website organized and structured. This helps us maintain our site over time and increases our development speed. Let's jump into it. Every site starts with a folder. Inside the folder will be each part of our site organized in a way that makes it easy to find what we are looking for. Let's create a folder on our desktop and name it website. On a Mac, we can right click on our desktop, click new folder, and rename our folder to website. Next, we're gonna create our index.html file. This will be the home page of our site. Let's create one by opening up VS Code. We can do that by going to our spotlight, typing in code, and top hit Visual Studio Code. Then we can go to File, New File, File, Save, and name it to index.html. And then we're going to go to our desktop, find that folder we created, and save it within it. Remember how I said we were going to compare structuring our site like a dresser drawer in a home? The index.html file will be the drawer of our HTML code. If we want to add or fix some of our HTML code, we will know where to locate it because it's all in this file. Inside our index.html file, we are going to write the HTML tag. The HTML tag tells the browser that this is an HTML file. Let's add the HTML tag now. Nested inside the HTML tag, we are going to add our head tag. Let's add the head tag now. The head tag contains information about our site. Think of this like your address for your home. For example, we could use the title tag to tell users you are on our website. Let's add the title tag in now. The title changes how our website looks to our tab in the browser. This is very useful to tell our users where they can find our site when they have multiple tabs open in the browser. Let's change the title to awesome website and then we can do we can right click on our file and if you don't see this open you can click this icon here it shows the contents of our folder and you can right click our index.html file and reveal it in finder and then we can double click it and you can see our title tag is up here and close this and if we go Back to our VS Code, our index.html file, we can change the title to Dope Website. And then we can go back to our browser and refresh. And you can see how the title changed and is reflected in the tab. If you had a bunch of tabs open, as you could see, you'd be able to see the Dope Website. Let's close all these tabs. Now let's add our body tag below the head tag. Let's add the body tag now. The body tag identifies the main content of our site. Inside here is all the visual information a user will see on the screen. Think of the body tag like a container for our content. In fact, that's exactly what we call it. When we have a tag wrapped or containing another tag, we call it a container. So the HTML tag would be the tag, would be the container of both the head and the body tag. See how the HTML is containing or wrapping around both the head and the body. And then we also have head as its own container because it's wrapping around the title tag. Next, let's insert our each one tag within our body tag. 
Now the body tag is the container for our H1 tag. The H1 tag represents the main title of our document. H1 stands for header one. Very often this can be the same as your title tag we made in the head tag. In this case, we're gonna name them differently so we can tell them apart. So I'm gonna say, welcome, uh, welcome to our amazing site. And then I'm gonna save it. Then we can reveal and finder, click it, say, welcome to our amazing site. Awesome. One thing you could do also is move over your VS code next to your browser. And actually, you don't have to make your browser halfway because you don't really need the whole thing. And so you could do this, and this will make it a lot easier to go back and forth and refresh. So Let's say we're happy with what we've created. You know, we've got our title tag and we're welcoming, welcoming our users to our site. The next thing we'd want to do is add some CSS. The last time we came in here and added the style tag right below the HTML tag. Keeping in mind separation and concerns, instead of using a style tag like we did last time, this time, we're going to use a link tag to connect our HTML file to a separate CSS file. So let's first add that file we're going to use. So we can go up to Command, New File, and then Command S or File Save, and we're going to name this website CSS, and then we're going to save it within that folder we created. I'm already within it. Then we're going to say Save. And we're going to go back to our index.html file and we're going to type in, in our header, we're going to type in the link tag. Now it automatically added what we call HTML attributes that will help determine and tell this index.html file to link our CSS file that we created over here. Now we haven't linked it yet because we haven't inserted it in this href attribute. But first I wanna talk about the rel. This is, rel stands for relationship, and what we're putting inside the attribute is style sheet. And style sheet represents our CSS file. Now, you will see that if we don't have this, it actually won't connect to our website.css file. So then let's go over to our href and add our website. Uh, and you can see it auto completed for us because we're actually within the folder already. And something cool is if you command click, you'll go right over to your website.css file. Now, one of the advantages of having these two files is that you're able to split it. Now, if I close this, See how we can have both our index.html file and our CSS file open at the same time. We were able to do that by right-clicking up here. And now if I wanted to come back here, they're both in one. If I wanted, I don't know if you can just, oh, let's see. Oh, look at that. You can do something cool like that and drag it over just by highlighting. So if we wanted to highlight our H1 tag, like we learned last time, we can select our H1 tag using this, then do our curly braces, and then write our rule color green. And make sure you are saving after every change, otherwise we won't be seeing the changes reflected in our part in the browser. Awesome. So now you can see the benefit of separating our index.html file from our website.css file. The next thing we could do is separate our JS. So last time we used the script tag and wrote JS directly within the script tag. But this time, um, instead of 
writing our JS directly in here, like we did, um, or actually going to link it very similarly like we did with the link tag, but we don't use a link tag for JavaScript. We use the script tag still, but we use a different HTML attribute called source. And then we can link uh, our JS file. But right now our JS file hasn't been created, as you can see, before we created our website.css file. So we were able to just link it right away. But something cool you could do in VS Code is you could write out the file, website.js, and then you can command click it, and it's gonna say, unable to open because it doesn't exist, and then we can create the file. And then we can bring it back over here. And now we can write directly into our JS file because it's linked up through the script source HTML attribute. So we can do that by writing our button click function like we did in the last video. Let's add our button. Click me. Save that. How we can add our JS like we did in the last video. Document dot query selector. Grab our button. Write that on click. And write our function. Function with the open um, curly braces. And then we're going to write our alert. And this time, instead of welcoming everyone, we're going to say, what's up, people? What's up, people? No. Just a friendly way of saying hello to our friends. Oh, we didn't refresh it. Let's refresh it. And it says, what's up, people? Cool. So let's break down our script tag. So like we had before, uh, we have starting tag and an end tag and an attribute name source and attribute value website.js. You will notice that um, in the link tag, there wasn't an end tag and that's just the case in a lot of tags that are in the head tag. You'll learn about those as we go on, um, but they're far and few between and you have to know the specific ones that do and don't need um, starting tags, but you'll learn that as you go and as I teach you. So what we learned in this video is the separation of concerns, breaking down each part of our site into individual files, keeping our code structured. We did that by breaking out our website.css file into a separate file and putting our JS into a separate file, and then also having our HTML in the index.html file. And we also learned about the HTML attribute that provides additional information about our HTML tags. Let's take a look at our HTML attribute again. Here we have a script tag. We have the attribute name source, and we have the equal to the website.js file that we created that contains our JavaScript. Then we can take a look at all the tags that we learned over the course of this tutorial. We have the H1 tag, which is usually the largest text someone sees on our page first. We have the script tag that supports both inline JavaScript and file sourcing JavaScript. We have the link tag that supports file sourcing our website.css. We have the head tag that contains information about our website, like the title tag. We have the body which contains the content of our site. We have the HTML attribute, which is the container for our entire website and tells the browser that this is an HTML document. And lastly, we have the title tag, which goes within the head tag that tells the browser to create a title for our browser tab. Thank you all for watching. In the next video, we are going to take a deep dive into semantic HTML.